Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us this evening for another Westwood Trust Creative Chat. My name is Claire Williamson, and I'm the Director of Education and Community Engagement at Society for the Performing Arts. Just to briefly describe myself and my surroundings, I am a white woman with long brown hair pulled back um, and dark rimmed glasses. I'm wearing a sleeveless blue and white polka dot top, and there are several framed pictures on the white wall behind me. I'm so thrilled to be chatting this evening with our final virtual awardee of the Houston Artist Commissioning Project, Vivalda Dula. The mission of SPA's Houston Artist Commissioning Project is to provide economic and creative support to Houston's artist community with virtual premieres rolling out this summer and a live cohort of premieres taking place in October and November of this year at Jones Hall. To learn more about the Houston Artist Commissioning Project, please visit our website. The link is shown on screen. Now, before we delve into the conversation this evening, I would like to take a moment to humbly acknowledge the many indigenous communities that have long used and continue to use this land as a living and gathering space. SPA's offices in Jones Hall are located on ancestral land traversed by the Karenkawa, Atakapa Ishak, Sana, and Kualwitakan people. The Alabama Kushada people also migrated to the Houston area over three centuries ago, and they played a large role in shaping the culture and economy of our region. We know that a land acknowledgement is not enough, but we look to this as a starting place of recognition and respect for the lived experience of the people of this land and to broaden awareness of the forces that have led to this moment. It is now my pleasure to introduce Vivalda Dula, SPA's Houston Artist Commissioning Project virtual grantee. Born and raised in Luanda, Angola, Vivalda became one of the voices of the new generation of Angolan musicians that create significant cultural and international impact on today's Angolan music. Vivalda is an activist, singer-songwriter, percussionist, and dancer. She is multi-award winning, a nominated finalist of Star Africa Sound, International Songwriting Competition, and the Angola Music Awards. Vivaldo sings mostly about love and social inequality, particularly in her home country. Through her music, she raises awareness against child labor, modern slavery, and human trafficking, including her award-nominated song, Mazui, Voices, and Monandenge, or children. As a young child, she was influenced by her grandfather, Antonio Domingos, a storyteller, and her great-grandfather, Dia Lobilo, a master instrumentalist of the mandimba, or the African xylophone, and the kisanji, or the thumb piano. After forming the Afro-Contemporary Dance and Percussion Company, Carapiña Dura, in 2009, Vivaldo started working with classical Chilean guitarist, Dr. Marcelo Vilches Robert, and began experimenting with the fusion of Angolan traditional sound and classical music. This creative musical relationship gave birth to her first musical, Mujitsu, or The Guest, in 2010. This Afro-contemporary musical pre premiered in 2011 in Luanda at the prestigious LAASP, and then in Houston in 2013 during the sixth Aquaba Dance and Drum Festival. While leading Carapiña Dura and studying international relations at a, at a university in Angola, Vivaldo worked a day job as ambassador assistant of Mr. Kazuiko Koshiwa, a former Japan, Japan ambassador in Angola, to pay for school tuition of her youngest brother and sisters and to allow them to have the same education, as well as her mother, who is a military widow. Later, uh, Vivaldo relocated to the United States to pursue her solo music career. And throughout her career, she has shared the stage with well-known music artists and bands, such as 
Sarah Keita, Alan Toussaint, Ruth Foster, Beaton Wind, Cassandra Wilson, and Gabriel Chima. Also, in November 2017, she was invited by playwright, theater, and opera director Gerald Thomas to sing Gimme Shelter and Out of Control from Rolling Stones to his highly acclaimed play named Deluvial or Deluge. We're so excited to have Vivalda here this evening. Welcome, Vivalda. Thank you so much for the invitation and uh, I'm more than blessed to have this opportunity to, to be here. Well, we are truly blessed to have you with us, absolutely. And I'm so excited for your premiere with SCA and to delve into this conversation. So um, we'll get the conversation started. If anyone watching right now has questions, um, feel free to post in the live chat on either Facebook or YouTube and we'll do our best to cover it. Um, but I've got some prepared questions as well. Um, so, you know, your bio is incredible. And um, I think it's really interesting that you come from a musical family. You have these um, elders in your family that have really, that have a background in music and storytelling. So how did music and dance play a role in your upbringing? And, and who were those early teachers and influences maybe outside of family or including family? <laughs> well, everything started, like you said, in my family. I always say that I am very, very blessed to, to have uh, people in my family and to have my grandfather uh, from my mother's, side, my mother's side, who was a storyteller, that exposed to me this beautiful part of African tradition, which is the oral transmission of information. And this helped me a lot to understand who I was and who I am and where I come from. From my father's side, my great grandfather, father who, which I didn't know, but heard beautiful stories um, uh, 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 from my aunties and my uncles related to him because he was a traditional uh, musician for the soba, soba for the soba in the village. Soba is like a king in the village, and they used to play from village to village. They used to play uh, the madimba and kisanji. They used to play these beautiful traditional instruments. So. And uh, for the dance is my auntie. She was this gorgeous, beautiful woman who who danced. She was a, a dancer and uh, an actress. And the movements oh. on her body was so beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous to see it. And definitely the three of them in my family, they they imprint something very important for me. Um, while growing up to know who I am, where I come from, or, 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 which way I should behave. They were very, very, very important in my life. Wow, yeah, they sound like incredible um, role models and, uh, and just inspirational figures to have, uh, have as part of your daily life and, and the stories that are told. So did you um did you study dance with your with your aunt or when did you start um incorporate when did you start your study of of music and dance? Well, absolutely not. The dance I um it was curiosity and uh, I had somebody who led me to a place and to this place I was teaching how to do it from the from the very beginning. So dancing, you, you know that dance and music has this beautiful relation and in African culture they are always it is, it, it's in, inseparable. When there is dance, there is music, like every place else. So I was directed to this place. And in this place, I was teaching uh, how to move my body, um, how to behave on stage as a dancer. And I learned from for, 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 for many years. For the music is starting from the drum. So in where I come from, women are not allowed. Now it's, there is an opening, but women are not allowed to play drums without doing certain ceremonies. First of all, they should not be playing drums. And then they should have um, a ceremony to do so they can be able to do it. And it was a huge controversy. Uh, I was part of this Angolan female drumming group in Angola. It was so controversial because, oh, you didn't do the, the, the ceremony. And the other part of the country used to say, oh, no, but they are women. They should not play drums. It was so controversial. But I have these beautiful people that I met uh, um, on my way, um, along with along my, my way, that led me to these beautiful places that I was starting uh, learning these beautiful things. The drumming coming from my my father he was not only a storyteller but he used to play the drum so 
oh, everything started in the family. And then I had people in my life who lead me to, to other part of the art, artistic part of my life. Wow, that's so fascinating. Mm -hmm. And so interesting that, um, you know, even though women aren't encouraged to play the drums that uh, that you sort of picked up on that percussion element from your grandfather. Did he did he teach you? Did he encourage that in you? Or um, did you kind of Absolutely. strike that Absolutely. on your own? <laughs> Absolutely not because and in, in when I started growing up, so I, I started to understanding because it was now allowed for women to, to play drums. Right. So I think that's why it was the reason he never teached me. But he was mm. always present for us, for the boys and for the girls. He was always present. He was always playing, always telling these beautiful, amazing stories, traditional stories and, mm. and stories of his own as well. But I was never teached by him or anybody in my family. And only when I grew up, I understood it was because of the history, of the cause of the culture. Women were not allowed. You cannot touch drums. You cannot touch madimba. Oh, madimba. Oh, my God. It's a huge, 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 huge problem. Yeah. Wow. So they they never teach me. Yes, yes. And I, I was, yeah. I think, I was a little bit rebellious because when I when I learned about the place that I could learn, I had so many negative judgments about it. People telling things, but I was quite the kind of rebellious, and I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it. Some, you know, sometimes you have this things inside you that you wanted to do it and you do it and it's for the best of you and the people around you and then you figure out oh my god I was right yes <laughs> yeah absolutely I think you made the right call pursuing music you have you have that voice the that art uh passion inside of you for sure absolutely wow what a journey that is really um you know you often hear, I think, um, like in Western culture, that sometimes musicians and artists are perhaps rebelling against their families because their families don't think they're going to make any money in this field or anything like that. But your, your, your history is a whole different avenue of that kind of rebellion and striking out. Absolutely. Very inspirational. Um, so you're... You're best known here in the U.S. as um, an ensemble, as a, as a solo recording artist, but yes. you do have this background in ensemble performance and dance. So, how did those um, those experiences inform your work today? Well. Um when you work by yourself, the work ethic and the discipline is quite different <laughs> from when you work with others. And um, since I learned early age, when you st when we started doing something, they used to say, no, 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 you don't do by yourself. You have to do with others. You, you have to involve others. And then when I went to sports, it was the same thing. Working in an ensemble, very interesting, has my background. You are not just thinking about yourself. You're not just working by yourself. You have to have in consideration other people, if, either if it is another two, five hundred or a thousand. Mm -hmm. So you have to have in consideration of, um, of other people because you now depend on them and they depend on you to, 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 to do a solid, beautiful work on stage. So this definitely has... Um, has uh, been here as a solo musician. I'm a solo musician, but I have a, a band. Definitely uh, helped me a lot to understand how to work with a band. Even though my band is a is a band of uh, sometimes I play with four, other times with five musicians. It's a small band, but this helped me a lot to shape these elements to work together, to work in group, and to do uh, um, a work that can be satisfied to all of us. So for the for the dance, this is very interesting talking about my personal experience. When you dance, yeah. even though you don't have external music, you create a sound on your mind, even though it's a music that you don't know, somehow when sure. you're dancing, you create a melody on your mind and you start moving. So music mm -hmm. in, in dance, like I said previously, they are so interconnected, so beautifully interconnected. They don't go in separate ways. They are so interconnected. It's like a, a marriage that will never go away. And when I'm yeah. creating my music, 
I'm not just thinking about the, the, the notes that will break in chords or chords that will then, um, the notes that will be compressed in chords or chords that will break in notes. I'm thinking about the movement. I'm thinking about the shape. I'm thinking about the waves. So I think probably it's because of my background in dance and this affects definitely on my work today as a solo musician. Yes. Wow, that's so fascinating to think about, you know, um, because I completely agree with you, music and dance are so inextricably linked, but so many, I think, musicians and composers don't have that dance experience um, or knowledge, and so they're coming at their compositions from a different direction, but it's just so beautiful to hear you talk about um as you're developing music to be thinking about movement and, and shapes and uh, the visual uh, and sort of kinetic side yeah. of, of the music and the, um, the kind of effect that it will have once yes. it's out in the world. Wow, yes, yes. That's, that's really interesting to think about. I also just wanna go back to thinking about um, that idea of, like you said, having your background, having this background and working in an ensemble can really help you sort of be a good leader, perhaps Indeed. with your, um, with, with your, with the band that you work with um, and those, the other musicians. And it just makes me think about something that I was reading recently about, um, you know, different attributes of successful art forms. And one of these attributes was this idea that work needs to transcend an individual perspective, um, that like effective art, artistic work transcends that one perspective. And I think that, um, like you said, it's sort of that idea of like, whether you're working with one person or two people, or even on your own, you're thinking about the audience, you're thinking about the other, um, it's true, it's true, it's everyone true. who's consuming your work and everyone who's depending on you as you're yes. creating it. Um, yes. yeah, Indeed. To, to tell your story. I'm sorry, that just really inspired me <laughs> when you were talking about that. It's really tied in. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I I really would love to also talk with you a little bit about the um, the social message that is in a lot of your music. How did you um, begin to um, incorporate your this messaging around whether it's around um, these you know serious social issues like child labor, human trafficking, or or when you're talking more about maybe broader messages of love and kindness. Um, how does that, how did you get started um, developing those messages and how do you weave them into your work? This is a very, started very, in a, with a very personal story, very interesting story. My mom used to bring people from I don't know where. She just used to bring people at home, help them to bath, to cook for them, give them clothes. Mm -hmm. And these people many times used to stay in our house for many days and then they just disappeared. We never saw them again, but it was over and over again. And we used to say, Mama, you cannot bring people home because we don't know <laughs> we don't know if yeah. the people not you cannot you cannot do this thing this is not uh, it's it's not safe and she used to say ah, hey you on the gay you on the gay and just it, it, it say ah, you kids you kids you kids you kids don't know nothing and it was just <laughs> over and over and over and over again and so when we we saw this growing up my brother and i um it was just suddenly starting volunteering for for institutions, sometimes helping mm -hmm. um, for fundraising to help people and doing these things. And, and, and when it came to music, when I started doing music, it came so, I, I didn't realize that I was doing, it was just something that happens. I didn't realize it, it happens not, maybe naturally mm -hmm. because of my past. And uh, I feel extremely blessed that um, when I play, even if, it doesn't matter if I'm playing in South America, if I'm playing in Europe, if I'm playing in Asia or in North America, I'm so exposed to so many beautiful people, so many cultures, but so many, so many people that for me it's very important to to talk about these issues, to to to, to talk about this message, to 
to let people know what's going on so we can have a better society, a better community, um, and not just talk about it, try to find solutions so we can help our community, our neighbors, and we have this healthy community around us. And so we will, So it, it just started, I didn't realize when it started. When I realized it, I was far away from, from what it was happening. <laughs> And it is, it is something that I really love it. I really enjoy it. So, but when I'm on stage, will people listen to it? I don't know. I don't know if they will or they will not listen. I don't know. But it gives me joy. If, for instance, I know that at least one person, I can touch one person, can hear this mm-hmm. message. And this one person can talk to another two, five, or hundred, one million person. So we can start passing. It's like a chain to pass yeah. this message and then we can have a better a better community so it, it's everything started with, with 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 mama everything started with her yes wow so. wow that's such a beautiful story um just being being inspired by your mother to sort of uh continue the betterment of community um mm-hmm. and and always work to sort of appreciate and beautify our world absolutely i think too you're right you never especially as a as a you know performing artist even if you only if you only impact one person um you're still performing so often and all over the world that you're initiating you may only be initiating one conversation although i'm sure you're initiating more but you know even if it is just one it's one in every country around the world um every night you perform that's inc- it's really incredible um to think about that way it's um, a, well and i think that it's um for me it's not like a it's not an obligation it's a, it right. became like a duty to to talk about these issues because mm-hmm. some just because things doesn't happen to us doesn't mean don't happen to other people. There are people, even people around us, your next door, our next door neighbors that go through things that we don't realize. And sometimes okay. it's, it's, it's important to, to talk about this. And the music, it's like, for me, it's, it's a vehicle. It's a beautiful vehicle to, 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 to use to, to, to make this message be heard. Yes. It is a beautiful vehicle for this message, absolutely. Um, I speaking of messages, before we go, I definitely want to save some time to um, talk a little bit about your FTA premiere coming up this Thursday. Um, the work is titled Banduka. Um, what can you share with us about this work? What was the creation process like? What what is the message of this piece? <laughs> so Banduka in, in Kimbundu language, which is one of the native languages of Angola, means free. And in the song, I talk about Kalunga Angombe, which is the god of death. Um, mm. In the sense of uh, healing and transcendency in, in our culture, Angolan culture. Mm-hmm. So during the pandemic, we witnessed so many losses, so many losses, and we still continue to witness all of these losses around the world. And so many people lo- lost their loved ones, and they had to deal with this by themselves, alone, to bury their mm-hmm. loved ones, to deal with this pain, to deal with, the, with this trauma, so em- em- emotional yeah. and psychological trauma by themselves. It was so hard to see a, people, even though we don't know them, going through this. So painful. Mm-hmm. And uh, the song says, um, the, I, I just wanted to, 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 to let these people know that even though I don't know you, and this is one of the reasons I wrote the song, I, I want to, to, to offer my love, my compassion, mm-hmm. my solidarity in, in this moment. I know that many people have to, to go through a very, very dark path, taking pills and still taking pills and not getting able to get up because of, it's a very emotional, very draining right. emotional. So the, the the message is this, and I wanted to tell these people that you are amazing. You are you are amazingly brave and strong to go through this traumatic event, to deal with this by yourself, and then have to get up in the morning to deal with the world. Only right. brave people. So in Angola. We, the, we, we, death happens all the time. It's crazy. It's all the time because of the social condition. And at some point in your life, when you're young, 
somebody will tell you about the relation between uh, life and death. It's it, it's inevitable. Mm-hmm. Somebody will tell you in a family. So when somebody died in Angola, we bury them. After 30 days, in the 30th day, everybody come back. We gather together. There is music, dancing, shunting. It's just one of the most beautiful things you can see it. So people stay together. And when they are together, you will, it's, it's like the, the last departure of the person. Because when we are singing, we are dancing, we are chanting, all this beautiful melody. When you are chanting, it's like a trance. And you feel, mm. we know that the person is there. That's why we gather together on the Thursday. day. The person is there. It's the last day that we see this person. So you feel the person there. So in this day, in the comba, we call it comba. On the comba, there is a detachment. We do a detachment. It's not to forget the person. It is a detachment. For the person to know that we love you. We will continue Mm -hmm. to love you. And we know that you love us as well. But now Mm -hmm. we are believing you to Nzambi so he can lead you to your, not only to your final destination, but for to your new duty, because you have a duty once you go. Right. So we want you to know, we let the, 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 the person that died to know that we love you, we will continue to love you. But now it's time for you to go because we have still things to do here. So right. you both, you have to give us space to open this cloud that we have because that because we are losing you now to Zambi, even though like mm-hmm. the song the song says, eh, banduka. but now you are free. So now we are letting you go, banduka, free. Mm-hmm. So the cloud is go away and the open of space and the sun, the sun shine. So it's a beautiful detachment that happened in Gomba mm-hmm. and these trains that we feel the presence of the person, but it's the moment of letting go. It's a beautiful mm-hmm. moment of letting go. Will we forget them? Absolutely not. Will the pain go away? Absolutely not. Right. We will love, we will remember beautiful. The, 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 the teaching here is the beautiful thing that we will still remember you. We remember this person, we start laughing. Oh my God, do you remember them? Yes, and we do. And then we just sob, oh my God. Okay, it's going, it's going to cry again. Yeah, then, of course. Yeah, and then and then we laugh again. No, but we remember the time that we did this mm-hmm. and that is so beautiful. This my so it's a beautiful memory. So it's the, the teaching is the teaching is this and the music and I wanted really to express this on the music. This detachment is not to forget. It's just to right. let go for a new destination. And we let the person know that it's now your time and we have to right. stay here. And for the people that went through these very uh, hard times and is still dealing with this, just to let you know that the, we have to detach. We have to let right. them go. It's, get it's okay to let now. go. Now it's, yeah. time to go. now it's time to get up, get out, and to live mm-hmm. the life that we are here, that we were purposely put here in the earth to live right. and what it is that we have to accomplish here. So it's time to get up. And uh, like I said, these are amazing, amazing, strong people. And this is what I wanted to send. Yeah. That, uh, this is the message that I wanted to send. So the process of the music was, it, it's a normal process of music creation for us musicians. <laughs> so, I first, I um, created the, the melody, uh, the, 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 I wrote the lyric, and then I, I found the melody that was, that could marry best for the, with the, with the, with the, with the lyric. And since I play with live music, live musician, so, and we could not be together. So I invited the, my, my musician, my band. And because we could not be together, we recorded in our houses, in our places. So we record our music in our houses. And uh, thankfully for technology, they send all of these music. And then I mm-hmm. started, started the second phase of the creation. But it's a, it's a normal music creation. You create right. the music, music, then you must, you mix, you master, and then you have a final product. Wow. Yeah. That's, it's an interesting, you know, like you said, it's a normal process, but of course, with everything that happened that's been going on with the pandemic, it kind of has been a little adapted. Um, yes. But just going back to the message of the piece, that just this, this message of it's okay to let go. And, you know, we've 
so many, um, so many people, we've all been through some real trauma, but it's okay to let go. Um, that's just a, such a beautiful message of compassion. Um, I'm, I'm really excited for you to be able to share this with, um, with our community, with everyone. Um, I look forward to, to give everyone the chance to, to listen to it. Um, uh, we're we're coming to the end of our time, but I definitely want to make space um, for you to share anything um, else that's on your mind, anything that you're working on these days, um, so anything to share with the audience. Yeah. Well, things that um, the first thing is the following: during the pandemic, the beginning of the pandemic, I start volunteering for YMC International uh, Service, the Great Year for the Great Year stuff, mm -hmm. and um, to. Um, which uh, a group of people and myself, we are mentoring refugees, people that come from a very conflict and very complicated uh, um, war zone. So when mm -hmm. these people come here, they need help with the insertion in the society. And just to tell people that if you have one minute, two minutes or five minutes, it you give your time to others i know that we all go through very difficult times in our lives but it's very important for us to to help others as well every time we can so these people need help sometimes it's just to learn how to touch the computer and it, it can mean the world for the other people this is the first thing so the second thing is that during the pandemic i joined a beautiful different musicians from all over the world and we record in our kitchens in our living room and i put it together this uh, production that will soon be um, presented to the world. It's things that we made at home so beautifully and I'm very, very happy to, to share to share with the, with the audience, yes. <laughs> wow, that sounds so exciting. Where can folks find more information about that piece? Will that be on your well, website or social? On my, on my social medias more quickly, my okay. Facebook, Vivalda Ndula, or my Instagram, Vivalda slash Ndula. So it's, 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 it will be all there. Yes. Great. Well, we'll make sure to share those in the chat so folks can find you. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. Yes. And, uh, and of course, I'm so glad that you took the time uh, this evening to share a little bit about um, volunteer work and giving back to the community, because I feel like um, it wouldn't be a conversation with you without talking about giving back to the community. So yes. we're, um, we definitely uh, encourage folks to find volunteer opportunities that fit for yes. them in, in the community for sure. Um, well, <laughs> I think that is about all we have time for this evening. I wanna say thank you to everyone for joining us virtually, for engaging with us during the conversation. And a huge thank you to our program sponsor, Westwood Trust. Uh, thank you so much, Vivalda, for sharing your time with me this evening and for allowing our audience to get to know you a little bit better. Oh, thank you. I am the one who I'm more than blessed and very thankful for the opportunity to show this work and to share a little bit about my, my other culture. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. It was so illuminating to hear more about um, more about your your background and um, and the and the different experiences that you've had. Absolutely. Um, before we sign off, I would like to encourage everyone to learn more about and support the amazing work that Vivalda has going on, including that upcoming piece she mentioned. Um, and of course, her piece with SPA. So please check out her website, which I have here on screen, and we'll throw her Facebook and Instagram into the chat so you can find her there. Uh, Society for the Performing Arts is a nonprofit organization. If you enjoyed this conversation, please consider learning more about what we do at SPA and supporting our work and the work of our amazing Houston Artist Commissioning Project artists. Our website is also up here on the screen. And of course, make sure to save the date for Vivaldo Dula's Houston Artist Commissioning Project premiere on Facebook and YouTube live and on the SPA website this Thursday, July 15th at 7 p.m. We'll see you there. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.